you, we can talk about birds, a child can be burned. Very few incidences where a child can be burned at school, unless if maybe there is a kitchen, or unless if there is water, water somewhere, but a fire, I don't know, it's possible. Maybe they are playing with wires on a socket. It's possible they can get burned. So we are talking about falling, burns, choking from toys, choking from small objects that can be found in their bags or they can be lying around the house. You're talking about suffocating. For some reason, kids put plastic papers on their heads. So they will cover their head with a plastic paper. That can cause suffocation. But again, poisoning. Picking things that are not supposed to be eaten. This can also bring about uh, poisoning in the children. Dangerous objects like pins. Pins, needles, razor blades, broken glass. These are all sources of danger as far as our children are concerned. But again, a source of danger can be playmates that play rough. They could have uh, mates that play rough. Okay. This is also a danger, a source of danger for those children. If uh, the school has got a swimming pool, drowning is also something that is inevitable. So, during sports time, that can also be hazardous to some kids. But again, the equipment, the general equipment that is found around the school, it can also be a source of uh, danger. So you'll find a child if the head has been trapped between two bag grabbers. But in real case, it is uh, security. You tend to wonder, why, why, why in the first, first place did you put your head between the, the two bag grabbers? So the head is stuck between the two bag grabbers. That's a source of danger. But then, it's something that you can hardly think about. So with children, you can never be sure. You need to have your eyes open and your ears open as well. So to help minimize environmental risks and unintentional injury, teachers and families must uh, find information about children's development helpful. To help minimize the risk of injury, teachers and families will find that information about children's development is important for one did I lose you? Where are you? From the beginning <coughs> to help minimize the risk of an intentional injury. Teachers and families will find that information about children's development will find that information about Children's development is helpful. Four. One. Now we're trying to list the reasons why 
the knowledge of uh, the developmental needs is important. So one, planning children's environment. If you know, if you've got information about children's development, one, planning children's environment is going to be easy. So, one, planning children's environment. Two, preparing learning activities. That information is going to help you prepare learning activities. You are going to prepare age-appropriate activities because you've got a knowledge of what the range you're dealing with is like. Three, selecting, oh no, establishing rules. Establishing rules. Selecting appropriate play equipment. Selecting appropriate play equipment. Indoor as well as outdoor. Selecting appropriate play equipment indoor and outdoor. Supervising children's learning and play experiences. Supervising children's learning and play experiences. The last one. The knowledge is also going to help the teachers to develop safety education programs. Safety education programs. the health and safety requirements of a child and we have talked about several issues whereby we are saying the teacher is supposed to be prepared for injuries and how you can prepare for injuries is by having a first aid box this first aid box is supposed to be replenished time and again it, we should also make sure that you've got enough first aiders around give the learners first aid and not do not become a doctor don't be, go beyond first aid but again we say that in case of an injury that's beyond what the teacher can do the teacher should not be in a position to decide where to take the child to if anything call the child i mean call the parent let the parent advise if it's urgent before the child before the parent gets to the school the child should be taken to the appropriate place. We also talked about uh, giving strangers tags whereby they should be able to be identified, challenge them as they are walking into the premises, keep exits as well as uh, entrances clear. Learners should be in a position to know where to go in terms of fire, 
We also talked about how you can promote the welfare of the children, where we said uh, employ people that are suitable, and at the same time, make sure that the children's rights are observed. And we said that you need to employ people that have got the right qualification, training, skills, as well as the knowledge. Why do we do that? Because we are trying to make sure that at every stage of development, the child has to be treated accordingly. Because we have seen that the teacher is at the center, it's strategically placed to make sure that he helps or she helps the development of the children in spite, despite of all the challenges that may surround each and every particular child. So whoever is going to be employed to work with kids, they are supposed to have gone through proper, proper training, proper skills development, as well as uh, they should have uh, appropriate uh, qualifications. But again, we say that they should always, always at all time, be someone who is keeping an eye on the children to make sure that everything is okay. The environment could be fine, the toys could be fine, the surrounding is okay, but sometimes the behavior of the children, the fellow children could be a source of hazard. So that also has to be taken into consideration. So we have also looked at the rights of a child, whereby we're saying there is need to make sure that the welfare of uh, a child is shared. This is shared by parents, teachers, the community at large, to make sure that the child gets what they want or what they must. So we're talking about food, we're talking about uh, health, we're talking about education, we're talking about uh, health care, we're talking about right to expressing their feelings, right to be heard, right to life, right to survival and development, all that has to make sure that a child should have it. And again, we have said that teachers should be in a position to understand the differences in development from one individual to another. So as they understand the differences in the development, they are going to make <clears throat> proper actions. They are going to take proper actions to avoid injury and again, teachers, as well as parents, in everything they do concerning the learners, concerning their children, <coughs> they should make sure that <coughs> safety has to be taken into consideration in everything that they are planning for them. <coughs> and uh, we have also looked at <coughs> sources of hazards. So we are saying poisoning, suffocating, we are talking about toys, dangerous objects like uh, pins, razor blades, you are talking of nails, broken grass in the environment, these are some of the sources of danger. But another source of danger is a playmate, the one that's playing rough. A rough playmate is a source of danger. The equipment that is being used around is uh, a source of danger. Drowning, as well as sports. Sports is also a source of danger. So, after looking at that, we are saying that the information that a teacher gets, that a parent gets, or the knowledge that these two parties have, it is very important because it is going to help them when making plans, when making other decisions. Some of them is when they are establishing rules. The rules are going to be age appropriate. You do not tell a baby rules that are supposed to be followed by standard one learner. So a standard one learner rule is not applicable to a baby. So when you're establishing rules, you should be mindful to know that the rules are applicable according to the age. So we are saying the knowledge 
or the information about children's development, it is very important for the teacher because it makes them or it helps them establish rules that are going to be appropriate to age. Apart from rules, we are also talking about developing education programs. You can't call in a group of policemen in school to talk to toddlers about how to cross the road. It's not going to work. If you want to talk about how to cross the road, call the policeman and he or she is going to meet the reception class. It's okay. They will be in a position to understand. You call the policeman and talk about safety issues or do not be friendly to strangers to toddlers. It's fine. That information is okay because they will be able to grasp it. So, the young ones are going to be told to say, do not talk to strangers. You can't tell that to a baby. Some babies are not old enough to tell who is a stranger and who is a person. As long as they have given me a sweet one, as long as they are smiling, they are playing with my hands, this one is a friend. You know. But the middle class will be in a position to understand, to say, do not talk to strangers. Who is a stranger? A stranger is anyone and everyone you don't know. That is going to make sense. But you can only do that if you've got knowledge of uh, the children's development. Right? Okay. And uh, planning for the children's environment, selecting appropriate play equipment, and we also talked about supervising children's learning and play experiences. So all this is going to be made possible when and if only when the teacher has got the knowledge about the development of the child. If you are going to look at um, the course outline, you can see that we are moving. If all goes well, we may be able to finish earlier so you be able to concentrate on uh, a few issues as far as the course is concerned.